Thank you for joining us for another episode of CryptoCurrent. Just one quick reminder. CryptoCurrent is a cryptocurrency and blockchain education platform that's bridging the gap between the curious newcomers who are just discovering the space and the thought leaders who are shaping its future. All opinions expressed by Richard Carthon, the CryptoCurrent team, and their guests on this show are exclusively their own opinions. You should not treat any opinion expressed by Richard, the team, and their guests as a specific inducement to make a particular investment or to follow his financial advice. This show and any other CryptoCurrent production is exclusively for informational purposes. everyone welcome to another episode of crypto current your host here richard carthon and today i have a special guest all the way out from puerto rico but doing some traveling out in spain for a really cool conference um we have the ceo and founder dan of exidio how are you doing today hey what's going on rich thanks so much for having me on uh, crypto current i'm great man uh enjoying espana yeah i head <laughs> up to barcelona tomorrow oh uh, excellent man well um excited to learn about everything you got going on with Exidio. Before we do that, first want to learn more about you. Can you give us some background on yourself? Yeah, no, thanks, Rich. Um, so I've been in the crypto space um, since the middle of 2017. Um, it's been, it's crazy. It's almost five years now. It's been a whirlwind. Um, yeah. I've worked for a few different companies. Um, Salt Lending was um, a lending protocol, one of the early ones back in the day, kind of before Ave took off. Um, and I worked with them on marketing and community and, um, building a lot of their uh, channels. And then I worked with, um, block party, which was an NFT ticketing uh, platform. Um, and I've always been involved in the crypto space. And from early on, I was involved with Sentinel and Sentinel is a bandwidth marketplace for, um, people to have decentralized VPN. So Rich, for example, you can offer your bandwidth, um, to this, um, global network. And then I could be routing my traffic through your IP address and get decentralized VPN. Um, and so being involved with Sentinel from, um, early on and from actually 20, end of 2017, I participated in their initial ICO, um, and an active community member. I was also, um, and I was serving in the Peace Corps actually at the time in Costa Rica. Um, and then I went on to do my MBA and then after graduating MBA, um, I founded Exidio, um, with my, uh, co-founder Srinivas. And so Exidio is the company building on the Sentinel network. Um, and then prior to, to my time in crypto, I spent um, most of my career in the nonprofit and social impact space. Wow. So quite a robust background um, from doing the nonprofit work, doing some, you know, the Peace Corps work and then finding your way into crypto in mm -hmm. 2017, which, you know, fun ride up for your first like <laughs> major a uh, bull cycle that a lot of people became more aware of crypto. And then you also got to see the bear market. You got to see some of the downside oh, yeah. before we are now in this current bull cycle, if you will. And with seeing the ebbs and flows of this, I, it, with you being in the marketing community side, if you know how to survive during a bear market, like a true bear market, like we saw oh, yeah. and know what it takes to build that kind of community, you, it's it's easy to build stuff when things are going great, right? It's, it's a challenge and you really see who's around for the long haul uh, doing some of more of those uh, dormant and, and bearish times. When you think about the timing of Exidio and the community building and, and putting this all together, do you think the the timing of, of you kind of like launching this was ideal? Were you, when, did, when did you actually launch Exidio and, and, mm -hmm. and how would you describe that process of of using experiences from these other crypto companies that you worked with in, in using those lessons for Exidio. Yeah. Um, well, like to your point, Richard, that I think there's never a perfect time, right? right. Um, and you have to believe in what you're building and you have to put in the effort and the work. I don't think that necessarily the best projects are always the ones that succeed only because they were founded at the right time. The projects that succeed are ones that, uh, fight through bear markets that figure things out. So 
you know, Ave is a great example. It was initially called ETH Lend, and it was more of a centralized entity. And they decentralized their operations and they went fully on chain and they continued to develop. And Stan, uh, Stanley, the founder of Ave, um, stuck in there and continued to build. And that was what ended up being the success of Ave. And now, obviously, even in DeFi, all across DeFi has had, you know, you could say at least the valuations of the tokens and the usage has gone down a lot. Um, but they could give up now or they could continue to build and continue to make sure that they have runway and they have the right resources and they're going to succeed long term. And then when um, on a global scale, adoption continues to increase for using borrowing lending protocols, Ave will be there and have all the things, the infrastructure in place for, you know, more users to come. And I think Exidio were definitely the same way. Um, the Sentinel Network was founded in the beginning of 2018, um, but there was no face for the organization. It was kind of anonymous developers. It was really disparate, kind of true to crypto roots, like people across the world contributing um, in different in different aspects, but no, you know, lead developer and no kind of like face of the project. And uh, we realized that for Sentinel to succeed, it's going to need to have, um, and for be able to get an institutional adoption, it's going to need to have uh, a name, it's going to be able to have the right legal um, structure, and it's going to need to have an entity that's building products that's a separate operating company than just the foundation that's building the, the network. And so in um, 2020, we uh, founded Exidio, um, and it was early 2020. Um, so Srinivas and I came together in like March, April time, um, and technically we founded the company in September. It was when it legally got incorporated, September of 2020. So. Um, yeah, we've seen incredible growth. Um, our products are live right now. So what is Exidio? We're building VPN products like you know and you you know and love today, except the Exidio's VPN products are provably end-to-end -end encrypted and they're decentralized. So there's no company that can log your data. So Rich, I don't know if you use it. Do you use a VPN regularly? I do. Okay. Um, and what VPN do you use? Um, TorGuard. Okay, yeah. So there's tons of different VPN companies out there. And actually a lot of them are not independent companies. A lot of them are run by, um, you know, there's parent companies that are organ or, or owning a lot of these front end um, companies that we use today or front end brands. And it's a very centralized um, kind of oligop oligopolic industry. And a lot of these companies say, you know, that they don't log data and that, that all of your information is secure. Um, but that's not always the case. And it's pretty crazy because we're using a VPN, right? To get privacy online and to be able to get access to content we couldn't otherwise. Right. And we're relying on the VPN to give us that privacy so that our, our internet service provider, you know, Verizon or Comcast or whoever can't be logging our data. But then we're just using a VPN company and the VPN company can be logging our data. And it's actually been proven many times over that these companies are doing that. Um, so, at Exidio, we're building the same VPN products that people know and love and use, and we have them live on Android and on, I, um, on iPhone, um, and we have one on Linux, and we're building out desktop applications. Um, but the same VPN products that we use today on built on Exidio or using Exidio are um, on a peer-to-peer -peer network. So even at myself, as CEO of Exidio, I can't log your data if I want it. That's a really... Uh solid point that I hadn't really thought about before, right? So the, the like you said, the point of a VPN is to provide access to website addresses and do things that you typically wouldn't have access to. However, just because you're doing that doesn't mean that the VPN company that you're using isn't still logging your data and can still have a paper trail of all the places that you're going and, and getting some insights into what you're doing. So mm -hmm. what Exidio has done is allow for true uh, VPN, if you will, to where you don't have to worry about what you're doing within the VPN being monitored, tracked, and on standby to be able to be sold to somebody else or mm -hmm. to be given to someone else. You got it, Rich. It's exactly right. And whatever they want to do with that, that information, you know, they could do, whether it's selling it or giving it to um, authorities or um, you know, might go on a black market or, or whatever, you know, but with using Exidio, um, you can download the application on, you know, Google play or on, um, iOS, um, or you can put it on your computer on, um, for, you know, on Linux, or you can, uh, download the root file directly on GitHub and all of our, all of our products are open source. 
so you can view the actual code. And if you wanted to build your own company and your own, and your own product, um, you don't need to necessarily even use Exidio. You can find our code and build your own product and connect to the, to the Sentinel network. Um, and so Sentinel is a, a marketplace for bandwidth. So anyone that's offering bandwidth can, can um, offer it to the network, similar to like, I don't know if you know, Rich, the Tor network. Um, Tor, yeah. It's, it's similar to Tor, but it's incentivized. So when you offer your bandwidth to the network, you actually get paid in DVPN tokens for offering that bandwidth to the network. So it's truly like a Web3 protocol um, and a peer-to-peer -peer protocol. And then any company can build products on top of that network. That's pretty cool, man. And I'm going to spend a little bit of time here. So I was looking you know, on the website and it looks like that y'all are being built on top of the Cosmos ecosystem. And I've seen some yeah. really, really, really cool projects more and more being built on top of the Cosmos ecosystems. So two prone yeah. question. The first is, why did you decide to go with that ecosystem? And then mm -hmm. the second is, what has been the benefits of using that ecosystem? No, that's a great question, Rich. And actually, um, I can't take credit for that decision. Sentinel was one of the first um, projects building in Cosmos early on, back even in 2018. Um, they had reached out to the Cosmos development team and to Tendermint, and we're starting to build on Tendermint Core. Um, but Sentinel, when it launched in 2018 and up until just last year in 2021, was actually an Ethereum-based project. Um, so all of the nodes that were hosted were hosted um, on Ethereum, and the token was on Ethereum. And that was always on testnet, and that was always known as to be uh, a proving ground to get the network off off the ground. Um, but it wasn't. Uh, mainnet was launched in uh, March 27th, so almost a year ago, um, 2021, where we moved the pivot, and I led kind of helped lead that pivot from um, Ethereum pivoting onto mainnet on Cosmos on our own native blockchain. But the benefit to your question is, on Ethereum, it wasn't truly a decentralized network, unfortunately. Um, everyone was hosting nodes, and those nodes were getting posted to the blockchain. Um, but then all of the nodes that are using, that are posted to the blockchain, um, were then getting routed through a master node. And that master node was the, what be the node that would be calling your, like your phone application or your uh, desktop application would be calling the API from that master node to display the nodes on your network because of the latency and the throughput of the Ethereum network. Wow. Um, and so the, the understanding from the initial developers of Sentinel back in 2018, before really Cosmos had much traction at all, of the understanding of the horizontal, um, horizontal scalability of Cosmos and blockchains being able to communicate with each other via the inter-blockchain communications protocol, IBC, and the benefits of kind of the architecture of Cosmos uh, was a vision that um, the founders had early on with Sentinel. Um, and so they realized that this would be an opportunity to build on a chain that actually would be necessary for a bandwidth marketplace because when you're offering your bandwidth, Richard, on, on the Sentinel network and you're earning DVPN tokens for doing so, you're, you're posting the details of your node to the blockchain, to the Sentinel blockchain. And then when I'm connecting to it with the Exidio DVPN app and I see, oh, you know, Richard's got a node um, in the States, I want to connect to it. Um, I click on connect. I'm not actually like connecting directly to you or to some centralized database. I'm my node that's displaying on my application is being is only displaying on my app because it's calling the blockchain via API every few seconds and pinging it. Um, so that's how the nodes are actually um, displayed in real time. So with that, it's a truly decentralized um, architecture, and um, we knew that the Cosmos the Cosmos design, um, the Tendermint um, Tendermint uh, design, and the Cosmos SDK was the right design to be able to have a blockchain to support a bandwidth marketplace. Right. Well, thank you for breaking that down. I think it's really interesting to like see the journey of like where you started and where you ended up. And it was because of your, you're going after your ultimate goal of true decentralized VPN and being mm -hmm. able to sustain that. And the other piece of this that I want to spend a little bit more time on for a second is the ability for people who are listening to this to turn this into a business. So this it's the, the use case for this is kind of two prone. One is for self, um, let's call it uh, keeping your own stuff private and being able to truly have your own VPN that you don't have to worry about your data being stored away. And then the other side of this is being able to turn your, your bandwidth into a business. So can you kind of explain like how, how does that work? Uh, what are the, like the tokens you receive for, for doing this? And yeah, can you just kind of walk us through that? Yeah, no, absolutely right. Um, 
And I think that's what's really cool. And there's a really cool website out there, Richard, um, web3index.org. Sentinel will be up on there quick, uh, pretty soon, but it's some of the top Web3 protocols where you um, are able to monetize some of your excess resources. Um, so you can think of like Helium and people um, growing their um, the Helium network by Helium hotspots and earning the, the Helium native token, the HNT token. Right. Um, you can think of like um, SciaCoin uh, for decentralized file storage, um, which is built by Skynet Labs uh, by offering your excess storage. Or you can think of like offering your excess cloud compute um, and a project that's doing that in the Cosmos ecosystem that's really cool is Akash. Um, and by offering your excess cloud compute, you earn AKT tokens. Uh, and so similarly, if you offer your bandwidth, so you offer your excess internet um, you, um, bandwidth that you're not leveraging, um, and you offer it to the Sentinel network, then you earn the DVPN token, which is the native te- token of the Sentinel network uh, for doing so. And so to your point, Richard, it's a Cosmos-based token, um, and DVPN is available for people that would want to trade it on major you know, decentralized exchanges like Osmosis, and then major centralized exchanges like KuCoin or uh, Ascendex, um, used to be called BitMEX. Um, and so it's, it's an easy token to get access to, and um, there's a lot of liquidity, but it's, it's an opportunity for people to start monetizing their excess resources. And it's a great way for people to get into the crypto ecosystem without putting their capital at risk, without you know, getting their toes wet and starting to learn about how these protocols actually work and digging in um, versus just truly you know, speculating on tokens. Um, so I think it's a really cool design and um, Cosmos ecosystem, I think is only gonna continue to get stronger as more chains uh, adopt it and more chains are uh, connected on the inner blockchain communications protocol on IBC. Um, we're gonna see, I think, that that was really visionary early on, this idea of the internet of blockchains and how it's gonna function um, as as kind of the whole crypto ecosystem matures. Yeah, and, and thanks for, for bringing that to my attention. I'm gonna spend a little bit more time on that Web3 next in a second, just because um, a lot of what you just explained makes a ton of sense to me. I wanna make sure it makes sense to our audience, but yeah. uh, just as a quick aside, I personally, um, and again, everything that we say on this show is never financial advice, but I too am personally very bullish on Cosmos ecosystem and just everything that's being built in the, they do a good job of supporting the companies that come on. And I believe they're also pretty selective with who they decide to take on officially to help build out um, certain pieces and elements of their ecosystem and provide some bandwidth to be able to provide support to help you and other companies who are coming within their ecosystem to thrive. And I think that's really essential, right? Yeah. And I'd like to make one little clarifying question. When you said that they are selective of who they support, so it's actually permissionless as well, the Cosmos ecosystem. Anyone can leverage the Cosmos SDK, uh, the development toolkit to be able to build, and anyone can build their own blockchain on Cosmos. So there's no uh, stopping anyone from building a Cosmos-based blockchain. But what makes Cosmos unique from a lot of other ecosystems is that just because you know anyone can spin up an ERC twenty token and you know with a little solidity and it's pretty easy, um, but you're you're relying on the security of Ethereum, and so with that, you, the barrier to entry is very low. Anyone can build up and spin up a new ERC twenty token, and it can take a second or you know a new B, um, you know BSC coin or whatever. But Cosmos, you can build your own blockchain, but now you need to have the security for that blockchain. So you need to have your own sovereign security, and by doing that, um, as a um, proof of stake network, you need to have validators that are validating your blockchain. And validators are going to evaluate what is your use case, what is your blockchain, what is the benefit of it, and why am I gonna be spending my time and effort and resources? And it's it's financially intensive to be able to validate a network. Um, and so you need to be able to, they're almost like convincing investors. Um, yeah. You need to be able to get them to, to buy into the value proposition of what you're doing and that they need to spend their time and resources to validate your network. So by bootstrapping your own validator set, there's already a higher barrier to entry than um, just spinning up an ERC-20 token. But all that to say that there is no centralized entity that is supporting or, or saying that you can or cannot build on Cosmos. But if you're going to do it, you need to have um, a real idea and some real um, development powerhouse behind you because you're going to need to convince validators to, to commit to doing to validating your chain. Yes. Thank you, Dan, for clarifying that. Uh, I think that is a very good distinction. Um, and again, I definitely appreciate that that clarification um, within the Cosmos ecosystem. But it's it's when I first heard that from one of the very first people we brought on the show to explain that within the Cosmos ecosystem, I said, mm-hmm. that is such a differentiating factor that I think is 
going to continue to contribute to the quality of projects that mm -hmm. um, ultimately make it in the Cosmos ecosystem. Like you said, in the Ethereum ecosystem, you could literally spin up something. There's not like a whole lot of, and unfortunately that also allows for a lot of scams and a lot of people who aren't really having the best intent to be able to exactly. come into the platform. And, and Cosmos, I believe, has been doing a really good job of making sure that doesn't happen. Not to say that yeah. it can't happen, but it's it's helping to eliminate a lot more of that potential risk. Um, but coming back to what you were talking about with the Web3 index. So just to clarify, is that part of this, the Sentinel or is that a place where people who are familiar with Sentinel and what you have going on with the uh, with Exidio can then go and use some of their bandwidth to go over there and, and be able to monetize some of that? Yeah, well, that's a good question. So I would compare Web3 Index to like Coin Market Cap or Coin Gecko. Uh, it's just an information aggregator of all these um, all these things that are happening in the ecosystem. Um, but then you know, Coin Gecko or, or Coin Market Cap is like a large scale of everything that's in crypto. And then within DeFi, there's websites like DeFi Llama um, that give you details of like what's happening of DeFi protocols. So within the Web3 or like protocols building um, Web3 applications. Um, the Web3 Index is kind of that website. Um, and Sentinel's not on there, but we've had a couple conversations with them and it's just about getting our uh, chain integrated on their site. But they're highlighting some of the top projects that are building true like Web3 infrastructure protocols. Um, mm -hmm. And so that's where I think it's a really cool site to see that I think that that's going to grow entirely. There's only a few um, projects on there right now. Arweave is another project in the Web3 um, development space that I'm really excited about. Pocket Network. They're doing decentralized um, de uh, decentralized um, R RPC um, packets. Um, and so I think that there's going to be more core infrastructure layer of the Web3. Um, and, and a lot of those will be highlighted on the Web3 um, index as time goes on. And the web to be on the Web3 index, you need to be actually generating revenue on chain because of the decentralized infrastructure that you're providing at, at, at your protocol level. Right. No, thank you for clarifying that as well. Um, there's quite a few on there. Actually, you just spoke to um, all of them. Um, only mm -hmm. other one I was going to potentially add on there that I'm, I'm seeing on here, uh, SIA, which I've been pretty aware of. We actually had someone yeah. uh, from the SIA team come uh, be on our show a while back. And it's it's cool to be able to see another place where you can get information like that and understand what what you're actually seeing on the page and, and how they're, uh, all that data is kind of coming together and the story that's being told through that. So I appreciate bringing that type of resource to everyone's attention today. Um, another thing that I know is really important to you is security and the importance of how we continue to protect ourselves as we evolve in the world of Web3. Can you kind of mm -hmm. speak to um, some of the things that Exidio is doing for that in, in ways that you think people can also securely keep themselves safe um, as we continue to evolve in this space? Yeah, no, that's great, Richard. And I think that um, we need to constantly be very cognizant of how to be more secure and more private online. Um, our data is our own information. You know, I don't want a camera in my bedroom watching, you know, what my wife and I do. It's not anyone else's business. Um, I don't want someone watching what I do online. It's not anyone else's business. So with the VPN, you're, you're, with the Exidio VPN, all of your traffic is end-to-end -end encrypted. So your internet service provider can't be logging your data. Um, no one else can be logging your data. So it's, it's secure in that um, sense. And then also, like, if you're using a public Wi-Fi, um, th there's a lot of, like, security issues with using a public Wi-Fi. So if you're ever using, like, a public Wi-Fi, it's, it's highly recommended that you're using an end-to-end -end encrypted, provably end-to-end -end encrypted um, VPN. Um, and so, again, a lot of other centralized VPN companies could be the ones logging instead of um, someone else, instead of your internet service provider or someone on that public network. But there's still the, the liability there. Whereas um, companies that are building on the Sentinel network like Exidio, we are provably end-to-end -end encrypted. So... It, it's so significant in crypto. Um, you know, a good buddy of mine that I did the Peace Corps with had his wallet drained um, because of, I think, a keylogger that was installed by an email that he had opened that he didn't know about. Um, and so the better we can be about and cognizant about our privacy and about not allowing, um, you know, 
spoof things to, to take advantage of us, the better. But, you know, privacy or security like any other game is, is still a cat and mouse game. We need to consistently be vigilant. And there's no way that just one VPN application is going to completely be ironclad and all of a sudden all of your security concerns are, are taken care of. There's always going to be um, challenges and we need to be very cognizant and we need to be aware of the risks that are at place. And as far as if you're maintaining your own, you know, cryptocurrency assets, I highly encourage uh, using a hardware device where your private keys are stored on that hardware device, like a ledger. I use a ledger personally. I think it's far better way to um, maintain custody of your own funds. Yeah, I appreciate uh, you, you sharing that information. I personally use a ledger as well. And we, um, as cryptocurrency, always want to encourage our listeners and everyone who is coming into the space to securely keep your assets safe. Uh, you become the bank and you are ultimately responsible for all of the crypto assets that are within your sovereign authority, which hopefully all of them are. But in the event that some are sitting on a platform or somewhere else, even though it's sitting there, it's not necessarily safe and secure. So, and then even with the data that you exchange across the internet and as you engage in Web3, doesn't mean that all the platforms that you're on are decentralized. Some of them still might be centralized where they can still take the data that you're using and do whatever they want with it. So mm -hmm. as you continue to go through this space, um, I think Dan just made a good call to action to make sure that you're uh, secure, make sure it's private. And if it's truly, truly important to you to make sure that your data is not going anywhere else, make sure that privacy and security at the top of the list of the companies that you are engaging with. So definitely appreciate that sentiment. But as we wrap up here, Dan, you've dropped a lot of great knowledge on us. Mm -hmm. I always like to wrap up with two fun questions. The first being with all the information that you have learned throughout the years in this space, if you could impart one or two pieces of wisdom when you first got started back in 2000, or back in 2000 um, with this company, what would you, what wisdom would you impart to yourself? Yeah. So two years ago now, um, I think, you know, we, we talk about crypto and tech and it's, it's all about, you know, just the code and, and decentralization, but ultimately we're just dealing with humans and ultimately that, you know, blockchains are just comprised of humans, just, you know, decentralized governance is just a bunch of humans. And so understanding that and thinking that like, you know, this is a new paradigm and everything changes, like business is still business and dealing with people is still dealing with people. So knowing that and um, keeping that in the forefront in everything that you do. Um, so, you know, I think that that's part of been why things have gone pretty effectively for, for Exidio is because it's just my personality. I'm, I'm very fortunate to have grown up with parents that care a lot about um, integrity and about how you connect with humans and um, being being giving space and time for listening and understanding. Um, and so I think that that's crucial in anything that you're building. And I think that a lot of developers kind of get focused on the code, which is great, but you're building products for people and you're going to be working with people. Um, and so I, I just, you know, can't stress that enough. Make the, make that extra time, make the human connection. Um, we're all going through this together. We are. And uh, kudos to your parents for raising a good, person, good human, and you imparting that into everything that you do, um, having good integrity, having, doing well to others and like paying that forward, you typically get that energy back. And so I'm Amen. all about that too. So uh, I, I appreciate that sentiment. Um, but man, as we wrap up here, what is a final thought that you want to leave with all the listeners here today? You know, I, I think that you hit it earlier, Rich, that like security and privacy are, couldn't be more paramount. And so, you know, that's something that I'm passionate about. That's why I got involved with Center early on. That's why I helped co-found Exidio. So I really recommend that if you're not using a VPN, you should be. And if you are, are you sure that that company is not logging your data? And if not, I highly recommend you go to dvpn.exidio.co and um, check out the applications, start using them, giving us feedback, join in the Telegram community, join us on Twitter, um, get involved in the conversation, start earning free crypto if you want by earning DVPN tokens. Uh, you can stake the DVPN asset um, and earn 60% APY. Um, so there's tons of opportunities to get involved with the Sentinel ecosystem, uh, whether you're you know, more used to using tokens or using um, applications or you're not into crypto, but you understand privacy is important. 
Um, again, go to dvpn.exidio.co and um, download the apps. And yeah, happy to connect. Hit me up on uh, Twitter. Um, yeah. I oh, excellent. And, and Excel is going to say on that, um, you just did it a couple of different ways they can connect with you. But um, what would you say like for your first entry point, if you're trying to learn more information or you're trying to engage, would you say it's the Discord? Would you say it's Telegram? Would you say mm -hmm. it's, it's Twitter? Yeah. So if you want to connect with me directly, Twitter is, is real easy. Um, it's uh, at D and then four E's in a row, D-L-E. So at Deedle. And then um, if you want to also um, connect on Telegram, our Telegram communities um, at Sentinel underscore co. Um, so those are great places to engage and connect with us and learn more about the protocol. Excellent. Well, um, I know I'm going to be checking that out. I hope everyone listening will as well. Uh, Dan, thank you so much for your time today. And for everyone listening, stay cryptocurrent.